Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia. Um, today is the day, uh, today's summary is for day 25. So, um, this one is a bit early because uh, there is, is, isn't really much information, so I did not launch any, uh, publish any uh, quick update. So, um, so, start off with Kinzao again. Uh, Russia used Kinzao again this time, uh, this time they actually launch it at uh Yuznovskransk um to destroy uh storage of fuel and lubricant. So they say in the vicinity of a village of Konstantinovska, which is actually uh here. Within uh just north of this uh Yuznovskransk. Use I don't know how to pronounce that. So uh so we might start to see probably a few more kinzao use because it 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 does seems like they are actually kind of testing out the weapon rather than i don't know it just feels like they are just doing testing now weapon testing uh i might be wrong and then uh then and then some missiles also hit yet another foreign legion camp uh, this time round is at Ovruch in the Zitomia region. So it's actually all the way north. Yeah. So uh they apparently I think I think eighty foreign missionary might have died in the foreign legion. So let me go onto the battle fronts. Um uh, there's a weird thing happened that uh there is a video uh, allegedly is taken at uh, Luchanki, which is all the way at the border of uh, Belarus and Ukraine. So, so in the caption, they say that the Russian, these Russian forces have been uh, moving along the border and get far away from here. So, not sure how true is this. So, I'm just going to leave it there uh, for some time. And see how this goes. Uh, there is rumors of a uh, Russian advance towards uh, the place where they hit the Old Rouge. There's rumors of them advancing here. There's also rumors of them uh, advancing uh, towards Makariv and uh, generally towards towards the west. I'm not sure if it's true. So I just read it and I'm just gonna ignore it. Uh, Zelensky announced that he will ban uh, up to 11 opposition parties uh, I think a number of them is, do not have any seats but uh, one of them is actually the second biggest party in Ukraine for being pro-Russian so they are now uh, banned from do making doing any uh, activities uh, as a po political party uh, this actually triggers alarm into some uh, people you know, saying that oh Zelensky is turning into a dictator so uh, it's a war wartime wartime leaders are all dictators so uh okay I forgot to change this icon let me move on to uh I don't have much information to be honest the, there's there's really a lack of information which is why I did not really do any updates for today uh, didn't do any quick updates so uh, situation unchanged at several Donets unchanged at Bospasna so there's fighting at uh, Vulcan or uh, Autoretsky uh, although the Russian claims that uh, most of the village is actually taken by them which means they haven't taken the whole village and uh, but the Russians are actually uh, moving on to um, actually not Russian but actually the Donetsk People's Republic forces they are moving on to uh, Novo Selivka Truha or Novo Selivka 2 and uh, Kayamka uh, which I think is Kokarenka in Russian so this there is a push here and um, 
Russian lost Soloke again. Uh, then, uh, but they took stop Stepne, Stepne. Uh, and uh, the fighting continues at uh, Novokranka as well as Shataske. And uh, apparently, the units here that they are fighting is from the same brigade. So I now draw out a bigger, a bigger polygon out uh, to represent them. Uh, that in the report of the Russian, they actually name a name that they actually advanced twelve kilometers uh towards until they reach the line of us. Uh, what's it called? Let me check. Uh, Nikoske or Nik Nikoskoye. So the funny thing about Nik Nikoskoye is uh is there's a there's a place called Nikoske just uh, northwest of uh, Mariupol, but it's unlikely to be this place, right? And then when I search the Russian word in, it can come out on uh, Mikhilske, which is this point. So uh, if you measure, it's around 20 kilometers. Let's say if you go from the shortest point, it's probably, you know, around 16. So they say they progress 12 kilometers and reach a Nikoske. I have no idea what it's supposed to mean. They said Nikoske line. So I just put, just put a question mark here. I have no idea where they're actually referring to. Uh, I doubt is off Mariupol. Um, the reason why it's not off Mariupol, uh, not this Nikoske, is because the official Russian uh, map by the defense ministry actually already marked this entire area as uh, all raid, uh, as all captured uh, under Donetsk. So it can't be this one. So I suspecting is this one. And uh, there's there's talk about the Russians are now 10 kilometers from Kyrie, which is uh, not quite possible. And then there's another one that says it's between 10 to 40 kilometers which is absolutely correct so no change on this position but uh the there's on the kyvi on the ukrainian side they are starting to feel a bit a bit nervous about kyvi ray uh there are some uh talk about how this city is actually not prepared for war uh there's some talk about that this place looks very unhealthy anyway uh so I seriously doubt it's not prepared for war. Given how important this location is. Um Yeah, this I I, I talk about Kinzao. And um no news regarding uh this part. I can actually do a quick search. Um uh, just in case. Um, so Kursen and Parkman have a missile or rocket and uh, nope, mm, there's some protests which I saw, seriously, I, I don't, I don't think so, if it's, there is, then it will have uh, become very shiny. So imagine this is this is what I have for today. So um there's not there's no possibility of me doing quick updates. But uh I can talk about a bit on other things. Um This is something new that I haven't shown you before. This is the fire map where they try to detect a uh, fire uh in different places around the world. And uh this is not something that you should assume that oh there is an explosion or big fire or, um because if you scroll out bigger you will start to see that uh the fire only mainly exists a lot on certain areas and and you can see that around uh the, this russian territory here the it's not at war right so but there's a lot of fire here same in Romania, in Moldova, and then so these are not 
really know those uh fire the big fire that you actually associate with you know in this war so so don't be uh don't take these dots you know as uh burning troops or burning vehicles or burning houses is not uh from my opinion is actually these are these are just people actually you know using a uh, coal or something to actually uh cook stuff and keep themselves warm and then uh because these areas maybe are more uh backwards which is why they are using maybe open fires uh where where else where you look at the more uh developed side of europe very few dots uh because they use gas for warm so so when we scroll in into ukraine uh we have to ignore a lot of these dots and then uh, we focus on those that are very concentrated so if you go into uh, the area of uh, this Kiev let me change the map here. this one so this is much clearer right so this Kiev you can see that all these locations uh, this, there are open fire around this region so this go by simple ones okay so you can see it's more concentrated this could actually be a concentration of forces where they start open fires to eat or it could be actually burning equipments uh, so you can see in an urban region there's a fire going and then there's a some serious fire around the house uh, so, and then along here and I seriously doubt that these are all burning vehicles. So, some at Poloske. So, this could be, you know, the Russian forces actually cooking open fires to eat. But we can know that with the fire, we at least know that there's activities happening around here. Similarly around here. So, most of these are going to ignore. And then we look at only those very concentrated ones. So, you can see that around Donetsk, in the northern part, this is actually exactly where, uh, whoops, oh, how do I get this? Um, this is ex exactly this area. So, so this part is actually this part, which, which actually shows, uh, a lot of fighting and fires around here. It's actually between, uh, Donets and Holy Holivka, but slightly forward. So this place, but slightly forward. So in this area, this area is just happened to be the area that a lot of fighting and artillery strikes are happening. So it is. So we can uh, corroborate that this is, this is true. That the fighting is indeed over there, and then uh, we can go to just southeast of a uh, southwest of Donetsk, where there is fighting. You know, let's zoom in further. Uh, near. Okay, so we can see that it's off Alexandra, Ol Ol Alexandrivka. So where's Alexandrivka? My God. Uh, ne, off Alexandrivka. So there's actually fighting around here. So it's, there's fighting around here, which is not surprising because uh, they just took Marinka, but there could be you no know, fire going on here. And then uh, we can see some smaller dots uh, around Consent uh Novo Makhailivka and then further down just uh east of Vodian, which is here at uh Salot Salotke. So So you can see that the fighting is not the kind of a intense artillery strike kind of thing, but maybe it's all very uh to the small squad levels. Uh maybe platoon or company level fighting around here from the from the kind of explosion that we see there's probably heavier fighting around here because uh this the area here are heavily entrenched area whereas these are not the heavily entrenched area so maybe this is why we don't see as much artillery hits whereas the the fighting is still going on and um so that's so, but we do have some interesting fires going around uh, behind that is also very concentrated, which is uh, signs of fighting 
to me. Uh, but we have no information about that since the Russians say that they are all taken. So, and then we can verify why they are on fire. So if you go to Mariupol, uh, it's very interesting to see where the fighting. So indeed, it's towards the central. So let's zoom into Mariupol as well on this side. You can see that uh, the fighting is indeed in the central area here. And then, uh, and these fires could be actually, you know, tank strikes or artillery or grads or not, whatever it is. So causing all the burning. And uh, surprisingly, Azov style area have nothing. So the fire is actually, you know, in this area. So maybe Azov style can't catch fire because it's all metal. I don't know. So the fighting seems to be all explosions and fires are around here. As well, you can see some fighting along the just south of uh, Tohan Roska is road so maybe some fire around here otherwise uh this that after otherwise you know in terms of this map there isn't really much other thing there is uh, some weird stuff you know like burning on this but but you can see that the spread is curved so it's actually uh some forest fire of sort so so this is just something interesting uh, to look at. Uh, it's not indicative of fighting. It may not even indicative of bombardment. So usually I just use this to, you know, if you see the very concentrated ones, then maybe something is happening over there. Uh, but this is just something interesting. And then uh, another interesting thing is about the speed of the advance of the Russians. You no, know, we have been critical. No, even myself, I've been criticizing the speed of the war being slow, especially in the first week. And uh, of course, mo a lot of uh, people all around the world, uh, especially they are not exactly pro-Russian, uh, they are saying that no, oh, this the Russian military is rubbish, it's so lousy, second grade shit, and then they are moving so slow, and stuff like that. So, so the last time there's a major war in Ukraine was World War Two. And uh, I just want to show you how long it took. So in World War II, we start off in uh, 22nd June 1941. That's when the, uh, the German army started invading into Ukraine. And uh, it, took, uh, it took around uh, three months, if I'm not wrong. No, to, okay, three months, July, August, around, two, yeah, June, July, August. July or so not two months for us to reach Kiev and then uh and it took uh much longer to siege it. They siege it for around a month or two or three. I cannot remember. So anyway, uh where is Kiev? I've lost. Uh Kiev is here. So they encircled it, they moved on further and um they pushed all the way to off Kharkiv and uh, all the way to near Izium and that took another three months September, October, November, December sorry, four months and uh, within the period they actually took uh, Kiev so just to reach Kharkiv all the way from the western front that took around seven months so let's say we don't talk about Kiev all the, the first three months let's ignore it this entire part actually will take four months and then uh, the I think it's this one. Let me see. Uh, I I kind of miss. Got lost. Wait. Uh. Yeah. This is the one. So this is the other advance that uh, in in nineteen forty two already. That's one year after they invaded to this point. To they attacked and took another two months to reach uh to actually cross the border of uh, ukraine into russian area so where they took izium and then they took uh, the donbass area this took another two months so in terms of and though and the army that were fighting around here was in the mil in around one point around one to two million 1 1.6 1 1.7 million so that 
so we are now not even in the first month so in terms of the war the speed of the war is actually comparable to uh, i feel is comparable or actually let me see in terms of this part yeah it's actually comparable to to the world war ii situation and this was this is actually heavily entrenched uh there are other parts there of course is uh, much faster especially like on the north and the south uh in terms of this front this part is fast this part is a bit slow and this also because the east army is heavily entrenched so to say the russians are slow uh in taking ukraine or is actually not exactly very accurate so i just want to kind of talk about this i, I thought just an interesting thing to talk about uh since this video this summary is so short and i can just address about the speed of the advance and in terms of the air force to be honest uh uh other there isn't much of an air force actually left with in ukraine i i in the in the patreon video i actually calculated the estimated numbers of aircraft and helicopters that the ukrainians have based on uh open source information and then minus it with what uh, the russians claim that they have shot down uh there shouldn't be much of an air force left and um the only one there's haven't been a a, a announcement from the russian side that they have took and took down any aircraft or helicopters uh until today i think they took up took down a mi-8 which is a transport helicopter and uh that's about it we we haven't really seen you know, a fighter jets or you no know, or at support uh close support aircraft getting shot down or helicopters getting shut shut down no no more i don't think there's much of an air force left in ukraine uh they are still drones uh russians are shooting down drones every day including the turkish tb2 they have been shooting down them shooting them down on almost a daily basis uh but not the numbers are very small it's like one or two then drones maybe some of many of them are civilian drones perhaps so you know another four or five yeah so given such a big front uh that kind of number is actually very small so uh not a lot is in terms of that is left for ukraine uh however ukrainian forces is still very uh organized generally speaking and um they are fighting very fiercely which is why the russians finding it so hard to actually make progress nowadays since i since like just like what one of the youtube uh commentators uh in the, in our in the dps youtube channel commented that uh maybe the russians have le reached a uh, equi equilibrium and i think that is quite an accurate uh, judge of the situation that uh this is the maximum extent of what the russians can go in a very quick way and then everything from now on everything will just be a grind and that might actually be a tr the truth so anyway just a, a boring summary for for day 25 20th of march and uh i'll see you in the next update uh if there's anything to update and uh that's all bye bye